Hello, my name is Tina from Victoria Designs and if you liked our Dark Academia mini project, I have good news for you. The whole kit this mini project was based on is available now and I have even better news I made a tutorial with it. In this video I will teach you how to make a journal folder. It's more of an easier tutorial and the end result looks great. Of course you can use our other kits to make this craft project or use scrapbook paper that you already have laying around. And you can use the printables from this kit to make a ton of other craft projects. In this video I'm first going to show you a flip through of this finished folder and a few of the printed sheets. And after that I will explain from A to Z how to make this whole project from scratch. And if you would like to make this project or other crafts with the principles of our Dark Academia Writer Kit, you can discover it completely in my Etsy shop. The link is below. And now let's start crafting, my friends. So this is the craft that I'm going to show you how to make today. This is a very Academia-esque little journal folder and it opens with an elastic. It looks like this in the back. Look, opens like this. It's actually really simple, but very sturdy and very pretty to see. And it has one signature of the most beautiful journal pages in here. And in the back there is a little envelope. Uh, well, actually more of a pocket. So that's it. It's not rocket science how to make this, but the result is so pretty. And I hope you're going to have a lot of fun. Now, let me show you how to make this. I'm going to quickly show you some of the principles from this kit. Not all of them, but quite a large chunk of them actually. The embellishments and the papers I printed on 160 grams paper, that's what I usually do. And the uh, journal pages I printed on 120 grams this time. You can print these pages on lighter or heavier paper according to your choice for sure. So let me show you first a few of the embellishment sheets. There are 15 in total, so this is one. Some file folders here. Here's another one, yeah. And then I have some papers here. And now you see I have two sizes of papers. That doesn't mean there are two sizes of papers in the kit. All the papers in all of our kits are just full eight and a half by 11 inch size. But I live in Europe and I print on A4. And some of the papers I wanted to print fully so nothing would be cut off. So I clicked fit to page and that meant that they got a little bit smaller and I trimmed off the white edges. And from these ones it's okay because they're, these are patterns and if something falls off you hardly see it and then I, ha then I could use more of the length of my page here. That's just, that's just me. I just want to say you can play with your printer settings. I did that. So let me show you some of the papers here. Uh, there are some horizontal landscape ones as well. And then some of the patterns here. Horizontal ones. Very grungy. I like it. Another pattern. Yeah, these are the patterns that I printed out. There are more, there are more in the kit. You can see them on the images on Etsy. And then I have here my journal pages. Now I printed these journal pages again, like the smaller papers that I had fit to page. I didn't trim the white edges yet because I wanted to show you in every printer, it will be a little bit larger, a little bit smaller. You can fit full page, you can fit printer page, you can use A4 like I do. The sizes will always be a little bit different and the rest of the measurements for the tutorial, you just adapt from what you have here to start with. And regular viewers know that I like to print on the back 1% larger than on the front because every printer shifts a bit. It's just, you can be so careful loading your printer Every printer shifts a little bit and this way when you cut the front you won't have any white edges on the back. So let me show you a few of these pages. So look how pretty they are. Like I instantly want to study something, you know? You know what I mean? Look, look! See how pretty! So. 
And these are not even all the journal pages from this kit because I don't want to use all the pages. I printed these on 120 grams paper, which means it's thicker than the usual paper. And if I would have more papers, it would be too thick for the project that we're going to make. What you can do is have more sheets, but just use thinner paper. Okay, and because all the measurements from this whole project depend on how large these are going to be, I'm first going to cut them out and then we'll adapt just everything. And I will teach you how to do that as well. So let me cut these out right now. So I cut out my stack of journal pages and this is going to be one signature, one signature only. And I'm going to fold them in half. Fold this stack in half, I mean. This. It is a tad bit easier when you use lighter paper, especially to begin with. Like this. I'm using now a bone folder to really make a sharp crease here. And you see, these pages will go into a point. See, that's because, yeah, paper has a thickness. And now you can choose to trim these, of course. I'm not going to do that. It's absolutely not necessary. If you have a heavy duty guillotine trimmer, which is what I have, you can easily do that. Chop, chop it off. But then, of course, um, parts of this will be chopped off as well. I mean, um, parts of these pages will be chopped off. But I actually don't mind at all. It's what you want. So now that we know all this, let's make our cover. Now for a cover, I have two pieces. And this is not just any cardstock. This is 300 grams cardstock. It's really heavy, but it's perfect for this project. And the first piece to determine the height, it is actually a quarter of an inch higher than your journal pages. Let me take one. So I'm gonna take this one. So it is a quarter of an inch higher and it is five eighths of an inch wider. And for our second cover piece, it is the same height as our first cover piece. And it is, take this away, two and three quarters of an inch wide. This is going to be the flap. Now, to determine where to score, you take one of your journal pages, fold it in half. Let me see if I can do this perfectly like this, fold it in half and then add a quarter of an inch. So fold in half, my journal paper is five and an eight, and I add one quarter of an inch. So for me, the first scoring line will be at five and three eighth of an inch, like this. And then I just score one eighth of an inch further. Doesn't matter how large or how small it is for you, it's just one eighth of an inch further. Et voilà. Those are the first scoring lines. And for the little flap, it's easier. It's just at one half inch. And then a quarter of an inch further at three quarter of an inch. Again, it doesn't matter uh, how large your um, journal pages are for this. These are just fixed um, measurements. Yes, and I'm already folding my scoring lines. There I go. For these ones, these are quite close to each other. Be a little bit more careful. I'm going to put this away for a bit. There. I'm definitely going to take my bone folder for this. It's a bit more friendly for my nails. And now the second one, I'm gonna do it like this. It's just the combination of really heavy papers and two score lines really close to each other is a tad bit more difficult to do. So take your time for this. I think the best practice is indeed to have a ruler that uh, doesn't slip away. Put the edge in the fold that you're trying to make and then just fold the paper. Yeah. And now I have two beautiful folds here and there. And now the idea is to put some tape or glue on this tab and just glue one end on here. It doesn't matter which end because they are supposed to be equally uh, wide. 
Okay, I'm going to use double-sided tape. You can definitely use glue. Let me put some double-sided tape on this tab. Now, normally I would put my tape right next to that first fold, but now I'm going to put it like one millimeter, one sixteenth of an inch from that fold so that this flap has a little bit more comfortable room to wrap around. So I'm just going to stay about a millimeter from that fold. Doesn't have to be more at all. Just to have a little bit more wiggle room. Like this. If you use glue, just the same. Stay a little bit away from the fold. If you have trouble eyeballing or you're afraid that you're not going to be very straight with your tape, just make a mark here and here. Uh, draw a line with a ruler. Anything that helps you is a great idea. Okay, and now I'm going to glue these pieces together like this. There. And now we have our folder. And now I'm also going to cut these four corners, make them round. That's totally optional, but then it would have more of that school academic look. And I'm going to use the largest um, corner punch here, corner rounder punch here. And I usually use it upside down because sometimes I'm a bit quick and it doesn't catch in the right way. And then my corner is cut off completely wrong. So when I keep it upside down, I can actually see the corner is perfectly positioned. Like this. Oops, okay. Okay, so, and the next thing I'm going to do is again, totally optional. I'm going to ink all the edges on the inside and the outside because this um, craft colored cardstock is very dark. I'm going to use um, this Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. Just the brown one will do. You can use black and <laughs> you can use hot pink if you like that. Do what you fancy, what you like best. I'm also going to ink these folding lines here. There. And the same on the inside. And now the next thing I want to do is add some panels. I'm going to add a panel here, 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 here and here, not here, here and here, and a little one right here. Now the general guide I like to use to make in my panels is make them a quarter of an inch or six millimeter less high and wide than the actual uh, space that you have. So for example, this piece from the fold to the edge is five and three eighths of an inch wide. I'm going to make it five and one eighth of an inch. And the height is, as you know, is eight and a quarter. I'm going to make it eight. Same here. This one is two inches wide. I make it one and three quarter inch wide. So a quarter inch or six millimeter less high and less wide. Now for the panels, which ones to choose? That's totally up to you. I'm just going to use a few papers from the kit and see which panels that I would love to use. Now keep in mind that this flap is going to cover a part here. So make sure that it's not really cutting off any important design here. So for this flap, I think I'm going to use this one here that I cut out of a, one of the papers. And I also use the same corner punch here. And I think for this cover, I am going to use this piece here so that these two frames are very visible here but you can definitely use something completely different that's going to look like this for example for this prototype I only used this paper here so it has a bit of a leathery look now you see what you can do you can keep it simple or you can use very elaborate pages it's all completely up to you so I'm going to use these. For the back, I am going to use this piece of the paper. 
So I have my back, my front, my front. And for the inside, I'm actually going to use a paper on its side. This one, I still need to round the corners. There. And I'm just going to glue them in. I'm going to use a glue stick, so this tutorial is going to be pretty fast. And you can use tape, you can use wet glue, you can use anything you like. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to uh, ink the edges again. Again, optional. Oh yes, I have to tell you, because normally when you print this paper at 100%, it would not fit in here. This is the normal size, you see, but I shrinked it a little bit. Otherwise, I would have need to cut off pieces from the frame. That would be weird. So I reduced the print percentage for this page and now it nicely fits in here. OK, and now I'm going to glue these panels in place. And I'm just going to leave like an eight, one inch, three millimeter border all around. And there you go, a panel here, panel here, panel here, here, and here. And now we already have this little folder here. And to close it, I'm going to use an elastic. And I have this thin elastic here that's a millimeter thick, that's about 16 of an inch. And I think I made it eight inches long for me. I might make it a little bit shorter. It depends on how stretchy it is, etc. You can feel for your project what is best. Now, how and where to attach this elastic? Well, I am going to measure half an inch from the bottom and one and a half inch from this fold. So I'm measuring one and a half inch from this fold. I'm going to eyeball that it's about an half an inch, but I'm going to measure that perfectly later. So that's here. Let's see if that's half an inch bit too high, it should be here. So here is where I want to attach it and the same on top. So one and a half inch from the fold. And I'm going to check if that mark and this one is too low. So here I have my two marks here. And I'm going to punch a hole with an eighth of an inch hole punch. I could use my cropper dial for this, but I also have an eighth of an inch hole punch here. And since this is just cardstock, this will do. There, a hole. And here a hole as well. And I'm going to attach these with just brads, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around. Yeah, let's turn it around. I'm going to put my elastic through and we're going to have like half an inch sitting in here, holding it down towards the center of the project. And then I'm also going to put a little brad through. Now, this, these are really small brads and the heads are only slightly larger than this hole, but it works. It works. I tried before. You can use um, brads with larger uh, heads as well. No problem at all. There. So the elastic is true. The brad is true. And yeah, this, these are really, really, really stubborn brads. So I need conscious bending with my fingers. I'm just going to open the legs and I'm going to try to 
make sure that it, they're really, really fixed so that the elastic doesn't move anymore. That's really, 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 really tight. Make sure to really fix those legs. And then I'm also, for extra security, I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape on top of the legs to protect the paper that goes on top. And actually, I'm also going to make sure that the whole um, elastic is covered as well. So that's really, really secure. You can use glue right before you attach the panel as well. Now, so the idea is that you can close this little folder like this. And yeah, measure before to make sure it's tight enough for you. And yes, I'm just going to also put it in here and have like, I think this time a big eighth of an inch inside that it would be. But measure for yourself, feel if it's tight enough. Okay, so the elastic is true again, outside in, and then I'm also going to put the brad in again, hold the elastic, and I'm going to again open the legs and really secure them, really push them down so that the elastic is super fixed and it doesn't go anywhere. And again, I'm going to put some tape over the legs here and I'm also going to secure the rest of this um, elastic. You know what? Since I'm using tape, I can already remove these and add a bit on top like this. Actually, no, 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 don't remove yet. <laughs> now, this is not going to be a problem, but I'm just going to put them on again. Because I'm not ready yet, I'm not just going to put a panel in place. What am I doing? Okay, it's okay, because we're going to put an envelope in place on top here. Sorry, I was thinking of something completely different. I already said we're going to make a beautiful envelope inside. Let me show you how to make it. So, for the envelope, again, I need two pieces and to make sure it works for your measurements. Make it eight and a half inch wide and the height should be the same height as your journal pages. See, so mine were eight and this is eight as well. So same height as your journal pages, eight and a half inch wide. And the flap should be again the height of your journal pages, so also eight inch and two and a half inch wide. And make sure that the top is eight and a half inch so that you position it right. And then score it at three and three quarter of an inch. Like this. And then the small piece, just score it at half an inch. There. Okay, I'm going to fold these folding lines again. And again, I'm going to put some tape on this tab. This time you don't need to keep a millimeter away from the fold. Just next to the fold is just fine. And then make sure that you attach the piece that is not three and three quarter of an inch. So this piece was three and three quarter of an inch. This is the other piece. I'm going to attach the other piece, which is going to be the back piece to the tab. Like this. And again, I'm going to round these corners. As you know, that's optional. The envelope will close like this. I'm going to use my bone folder to make the score lines really crisp because this is heavy paper, of course. Again, I used the 300 grams paper for this. Now, on the outside, I'm not going to add any panels, but I put in the guide how to make them. I am going to put a little panel here to hide this um, tab edge and a little one here to hide the closure. But for the rest, I think I really love the color of this uh, craft cardstock, so I'm going to keep it like this. 
And for the closure, I'm going to make a circle closure real quickly. And since this is such thick paper, I'm only going to use two layers. So I cut four circles from a leftover piece from this paper. Going to glue them against each other two by two. Two on top of each other, real quick. I am going to punch a hole in the center for the breads. And I'm going to attach them here in the center, of course. And I'm going to make sure it is three quarter of an inch from the closure line here. So where the flap meets the bottom part of the envelope. So it's going to be about here. And half for me is eight of an inch is four, of course. And three quarters of an inch is here, like a little higher. This is the one. And then same height, but three quarters of an inch from here to here. Let me check if that's really in the center. Here it should be. Yeah. Okay. Going to punch a hole where these marks are. Oh, I forgot. I am going to ink the edges of the circles and the envelope as well, quickly. The envelope doesn't need to be inked on the back because it's going to be hidden anyways, but I'm going to ink the outside of the um, flap for sure. Maybe the sides quickly there, the front outside as well. Totally optional. I'm not sure it would make a big difference in this case. Okay, and then it's closed like this. So I'm also going to ink the inside from here, the parts that you will see. You can check that at home for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna put my bread through the hole in the circle closure. I'm gonna then put this on my trusted gap maker. <laughs> and then put it through the hole. And this way you will get... Oh, it's such a short little tiny bread. I'm sorry. So, and this way you will have like a millimeter gap where you can wind your twine your cord. Okay, I'm gonna open these legs there. And this time to prevent anything from sticking here when you put something in the envelope. Normally I can add a panel but it's totally not necessary here. You won't see it. I am going to add a piece of double-sided tape because it's usually pretty thick. And then, because this is sticky, I'm going to put some regular tape on top. You can use, use other tape, you can use washi tape. It's just to prevent that anything sticks here. And also to prevent that this would um, damage things that you put into the envelope. Okay, then I can just pull this out and now I have a nice little gap here in between. I'm gonna do the same with this one. So in here, in here, through the hole, open the legs. This. this time I can just use double-sided tape because I'm gonna add a panel on top anyway. There, I remove this. Now I can close the envelope by just putting tape on the sides here and here. If you like, you can make this envelope a bit wider to add some harmonica pieces to the side. I'm not going to do that. But that means you can't put as much in the envelope as if you would put some extra sides in here. But that's your choice. I'm just going to put some quarter of an inch double-sided tape on these edges. Yeah. 
like this. Oh, I'm not going to close it yet because I forgot something. I need to first put a tiny panel here. So make it a quarter, quarter of an inch less high than the envelope. So that becomes for me eight inch minus a quarter of an inch is seven three quarters. And I'm going to make it like one and a half inch so that it's it's going to be covered by this front piece. So one and a half by seven three eight. I have some leftovers of this type of paper, but I think I'm going to use some of this newspaper typey paper from the kit. I'm also going to use that for the panel inside here. So this is too wide. This is going to be one and three quarter an inch. I'm going to round the corners for the inside of the tab here. So this is gonna come here. This is gonna come in here. Again, super optional, but otherwise you would see the closure here, of course. Adding some more ink to the edges. Okay, let's glue these in. So this piece comes here, eighth of an inch from the fold, eighth of an inch from the top and the bottom. There, I didn't ink the bottom piece because you're not going to see it anyway. So, okay, can you believe it? I just emptied my glue stick. I thought I was going to make it with this tutorial, but I can't. I literally emptied three glue sticks with making all the mini projects and this, of course, and, and some trials and etc. But three in a few weeks, like what? Okay, but luckily I have a lot of other glue there, but it probably sticks better. Okay, I'm going to add this panel here, this. Okay, and then I'm going to remove these side markings and close the envelope. And now it looks like this. Of course, I'm actually going to add some more ink in this fold as well. There. Of course, you can add a panel here and here as well. As I said, uh, just make it a quarter of an inch less high and wide from the space that you have. I'm going to tie some twine here. Some knots that it doesn't lose doesn't get loose, sorry. Here, triple knot, that's never gonna come loose. And then, one, two, three, and cut off what's left over. And now, I can put this envelope in here like this. But before I'm going to do that, I'm actually going to... Oh, <laughs> I lost one of these. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of uh, this paper here, a little strip just to, to hide this. Why am I not putting my envelope like this? Well, you can, but your pages from your journal are going to be here, so it would be harder to open it. So I really recommend to open the envelope this way. But before, as I said, a little strip here, again, as high as this one. And I am, in my case, I'm going to make sure, yeah, like about an inch is more than enough. Again, some ink. Okay, glue, 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 glue. And then I'm going to glue it here in place. I am going to keep an eighth of an inch from the fold. Like this. Okay. And now to put this in here, I am going to, to make sure it really sticks, put a border of 
um, double-sided tape on all the edges, glue in the center and just glue it in. I'm a bit far from the edge here, but it's okay. Make sure it really sticks. Okay, and then, oh yeah, <laughs> hmm. let's one-handedly remove these. That was not a great idea. Okay, and now I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to make sure that this envelope will be about an eighth of an inch from the fold again. Great. Okay, so that's down. We're almost there, I promise. So I'm closing this and now with the elastic like this, very pretty, it can be closed like this. And now the most important part is not ready yet. This is the first time these journal pages are going to be the last thing to be put in here. See, it's going to be like a little, really filled little folder. Okay, now, now you can sew these in here with a three hole pamphlet stitch, but well, I really, really like my um, staple method and I'm going to do that here again. I have a bunch of staples here. I'm gonna need a mat underneath and I'm going to clip off two staples. These are actually different and much harder to use <laughs> than my previous ones but it's okay they work okay i have two staples here and i'm gonna measure them because my normal staples are half an inch wide and these are less these are one sixteenth of an inch less but that's okay so what i'm going to do now i'm first going to measure where i want my holes in the cover now i'm going to try to make my holes in the center of this eighth of an inch fold here and it really needs that to fit all these pages i'm going to yeah it, you can choose i'm going to keep like one and three eighth of an inch from the bottom but you can definitely choose and make a mark that is in centimeters almost four and a half and from the other side as well one and three quarter sure i'm in the center here um use a pencil because you're probably going to see it if you're not right and then yeah use a pencil and i'm just keep going <laughs> using this this pen okay and now i am this is the width of my staple you can also use a staple actually to find the uh, right hole but it's so fiddly i'd rather do it like this here yeah i have the places where my holes should go i'm just quickly going to punch the holes lightly because only a staple needs to go through not a whole elastic or something okay so now my journal pages will go in the, they need um holes as well okay let me get rid of this for you because it's not very pretty to look at so i'm gonna make sure this is in the center and i'm actually going to just transfer these measurements this stack is a bit shorter than the uh, cover so i'm measuring it like this so i'm now very sure that these holes will be exactly where i want them Okay, and now make sure they're stacked really well. Yeah, you can clip these together so they won't move.
and then here and here. So now I'm going to get my staples and put them in my cover outside in. In an ideal world, this would, these would be like brass or copper colored or something. So, and now oh, I'm having the whole thing upside down. Now I'm going to put these through the holes as well. So this is a bit fiddly. Don't do this or attempt to do this when you're rushed. <laughs> Just a warning. I got the first two ones true. I'm already going to close these now. Yeah, these are so much harder to close than my previous staples. So there are different kinds of staples. I'm learning something every day. Okay, and now I'm going to try to get these true. Yep, got it. I got them. Now I'm going to close the staple again. There. And now I'm going to carefully use my bone folder to fold them both ways. There you go. Et voila. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. It's ready. Pretty. Sturdy. Nice. So this is my journal folder. It closes and opens with an elastic. And it has a whole journal inside one signature, which makes it easy. And in this envelope pocket, no, well, it's actually more of a pocket. You can put all kinds of ephemera, stickers, whatever you might need as extras for your journal. I am truly pleased with this. And of course, I made these with the principles of our Dark Academia kit, but you can make this with totally other papers from other kits of our shop or with scrapbook papers that you already have laying around. Okay, dearest crafters, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you would like us to send to you the sheet with the measurement guide, just opt in via the link in the description and all will be sent to you. If you have some friends that you think hmm, they might like to see this tutorial as well, just share this video link with them or share on your social media. And I wish you a very, very lovely crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you.